our foster care system is shattered. And this podcast is about how we as a community can come together to bring about change, change in the system and changing the lives of children in foster care. Hi, my name is Rob Shear. I'm the founder of a national charity called Comfort Cases. I'm an advocate for children in foster care. I'm a public speaker. I'm an author of a forever family, but most important, I'm a dad to five of the most amazing kids. Welcome to the Fostering Change podcast. It is so hard to believe that we are on another episode of Fostering Change. You know, I always talk about the journey, the journey of how we got to where we are today. You know, this year, it's been eight years since we packed our very first case. It was eight years ago as I was sitting in my office in Rockville, Maryland, when Reese walked in and we talked about how were we going to teach our children to impact our community? You know, I say this quite often, our community is not our zip code. Our community is our human race. And what affects people in my little town of Darnstown, Maryland, it affects people in Austin, Texas, and it affects people in San Francisco. But one thing I have learned now, and I'm so excited about the three guests that I'm getting ready to, to introduce you to, is that Foster care affects people even in the United Kingdom. See, we always think that this is an American thing, that, you know, we're the ones who have foster care. But I want you to know, as I have, you know, spoke to so many people throughout our world, foster care is everywhere. It is in every country. We are calling them different things. They're all carrying trash bags, no matter whether you want to call them rubbish bags or bin bags or, you know, it is the fact that we as a world have not been able to do what we need to do the most. And that is support and to make children who enter the foster care system know that they matter, that they're loved. They're not disposable. They're not invisible. And so after many, many months, we finally have done it. We have launched Comfort Cases UK. And I will tell you, it would have never happened without the three people I'm getting ready to introduce you to. See, I've always wanted to go around the world. I've always wanted to make sure that children who are all over the world understand that we are one and that we are one human race. So when they reached out to me and we started becoming friends, I knew the next step would be to have Comfort Cases UK. So I'd like to introduce you to my new friends, Katie, Sarah, and Rich. Welcome to Fostering Change. Hi. First of all, I want you to talk because I love your accent. Um, and so, <laughs> um, so I would like to know how it all started. Well, um, so way back in the middle of the pandemic last year, we formed um, us three, um, along with a few other people, a charity here in the UK called You Donate, We Deliver. And we were helping out our um, NHS service, our health service, um, providing them with snacks and meals to get them through the hard times they were going through. Um, and we formed a great friendship and a great team. And my brother who lives over in the US um, has a podcast and he interviewed us for his radio station. And um, a few months later, he interviewed Rob on his radio station and just thought that the two of us and our link would be so great. Um, and obviously now we're coming towards the end of the pandemic and we've stayed in touch with Rob over in the US. We couldn't have thought of a better connection to link the charity work that we'd been doing and um, branch out and help comfort cases. So, you know, I, I will have to, I give your brother all the credit in the world because I am so, so lucky that he introduced me to you all. And, you know, I, I was saying to my team here in the US that, you know, we've had a lot of people reach out to us and say, hey, we want to do this here, we want to do this. And it just never felt comfortable for me. It never was a fit. And I remember when we had our first call um, and I actually um, reached out to your brother afterwards and was like, this yeah. is it. This is it. <laughs> so, you know, the fact that you guys are. Yeah. 
Well, the fact that you guys, um, <laughs> I think you have it in your blood um, to help. I think that, you know, mm -hmm. you all are really considered what we call doers um, and you're really yes. making a difference. I'd like to go back with, you know, your YDWD. How many, how many, how much food did you deliver during this, this awful time? So uh, the first lockdown, which started March, 2020, in 10 weeks, we delivered 80,000 meals to 32 wards across 22 hospitals. Wow. And that's without helping local food banks and all the snacks and homemade baked goods that we sent and sandwiches for the paramedics. And sandwiches for the paramedics. And so I, I would guess somewhere in the region of 100,000, close on 100,000 individual meals in 10 weeks with the, with the support of, of the local community, which as you say, is not just, concentrated to your own zip code but you know we Katie and I both had friends and family in different hospitals but both facing frontline situations and we were independently doing our own thing and we've known each other for years and we kind of spoke we were like this this we've got to do something mm. something's got to give we can't sit back and watch um because we are doers mm. and uh and this from this little tiny bit of kindness we got another guy involved who is also helping us with comfort cases to start driving the food around to hospitals more hospitals heard about it they came on board the team grew rich who we didn't know before this was one of our original drivers um and lawrence as well who's also on our team was one of our original drivers and within a very short space of time there was an instant yeah. connection that was very very strong in terms of we have to help there's no there's nothing else to do but help mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how we do it or how or why or how it gets there but it's got to be done yep. um and the nine of us are now working for comfort cases that is the connection that links us all together wow and it started Rob, it, it, when i first got on board it was tiny i remember arriving at casey's house <laughs> with a delivery of some food containers uh and there were no uh, tent, there was nothing, it was just literally a, a, a gravel driveway with uh, Katie and her mum uh, and Sarah at the time had COVID so she couldn't help mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I first got involved and it, it became very very quickly as Sarah and Katie have said, uh, it turned from a very very small thing into something huge very very quickly uh, and we had to adapt very quickly. So I, I, I'm assuming that, you know, because of that, you know, your community is talking about you. I mean, what a difference. I mean, during, you know, during the pandemic, you know, of all times when we, we needed each other, um, you know, I can assume that your community is talking about all the amazing things that you have done. So you probably already have a following. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're, we hope, and, you know, I saw Richard clap there for a minute that we hope mm -hmm. that we are coming to the other side of this pandemic what a what a what a life changer i hope that we mm. never have to experience this in my lifetime or my children's lifetime but now that we're coming on the other side of this pandemic your followers are like okay what are you going to do next um you right. know we all know really that the there, is, there is a hunger issue in in the world we all know that you know there is a hunger but we also know that we have children in foster care who need us. And, and my statistics show that you have roughly about 54,000 kids who are in your foster care system within your, your area, is that correct? So there's, there's, um, there are 54,000 children in England, but across England, Ireland and Wales, there are actually 96,000 children, over 96,000 mm. children in foster care and only around 42,500 foster families registered. Wow, so what happens so to where all are the other kids? Yeah, where are the other kids going? Well, I, I believe that there is a, a kind of a combination of temporary placements, children's homes. I would imagine that some of those are kind of care leavers or sofa surfers that are known to be within the system of children's services, but are not necessarily within the system. Um, so, yeah, it, there's definitely a big disparity between the children that need looking after and and the children who have the help that they actually need. And that's not OK. Yeah.
It's not okay. And by the way, we have the same issue here in, in the US. We have the same issue, 438,000 children in our system and we do not have enough homes for them. They're, they're mm -hmm. living in group homes. They're, you know, I mean, we, we're finding some of them have had to sleep in offices. They, I mean, these are the forgotten disposable children. And that is something we have to stop because mm -hmm. these kids, whether they're in, in the UK or they're in the United States or they're in Australia or Brazil or even Tokyo and Japan who also have foster care systems, these children are our future. They're our future. And if we don't invest in them, you know, for us in our country, the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to end up investing in them, putting them in a penitentiary, um, because mm -hmm. that's where we see that what's happening. We also are seeing here, and I'm wondering, you know, do you guys, do, are you seeing this as well? We're seeing an increase of homelessness um, when it comes to our youth. Um, because we're not giving them the proper support when they age out. Mm. Well, I think that the, one of the problems with care leavers for us in the UK is that obviously similarly to the US, they don't have the right support and guidance when they leave the care system, but literally on their day that they turn 18, they are no longer necessarily permitted or uh, allowed to stay in their foster home. So- Or wanted. Or wanted. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted. And so, yes, there's homelessness. Yes, they go on to sofa surfing. That inevitably leads to a, a survival system where they will do anything what they have to do to survive. And it's it's a very sad fact of the statistics that a lot of the children that enter care in the UK are in their teen years. And a lot of them, by the time they enter the foster care system, are already in trouble, are already walking down a path that is on the verge of being too late to pull them back from um and and that obviously leads to problems with them finding foster homes uh, and they they get moved around a lot i mean kids in kids in foster care in the uk often have at least three placements within a year because they're trouble they're difficult they're problematic their lifestyle doesn't suit um and nobody's just seeing them as victims of their circumstances they didn't choose to be born into that circumstance. They are just victims of their circumstance. They are still a child, even yes. at the age of 14, 15, 16. They yeah, are a kid. You're right. You're right. And and the thing that we, we need to always remember is children come into foster care because of choices other people made. Um, you know, they, 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 the choice that other people made put them in that situation. And even if they did come in because they were heading down a path that they shouldn't, that path was still, you know, forged because of someone else was because of someone else. You know, here at Comfort Cases in the in the US, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure is that we give hope and dignity to our youth that are in foster care, that we take the stigma away of handing someone a trash bag. But we also mm -hmm. want to do what the four of us are doing right now, and that is talking about it. I do believe mm -hmm. that by us talking about foster care will bring about change. Uh, with us mm -hmm. talking about foster care, we could get those, you know, homes that we need and you know when when richard when you just made the comment about they don't want them i remember um when i was 18 you know we have the same problem here in the us and when i was 18 the fall of 1984 and i turned 18 in the foster care system and even though i was a senior in high school you know my senior year um because i turned 18 and the check wasn't coming any longer, I became homeless. You know, not because yeah. of a choice of my own. It was because mm -hmm. the system failed me. The system failed me. And what I'm hearing from the three of you is that it's almost like a mirror image. It's like a mirror image that that what what's happening with you and where you're located is no different than what's happening here within the US. And so well, I think you, you gathered dozens of people from every country in the world, you'd hear the same story mm. all over the world. It's got to be. Uh, but I think one of the problems, particularly here, I don't know if it's the same over there, is it's a very hidden problem. People don't seem to want to talk about it, um, I, I guess because of vulnerable children. Um, but I think it's just one of those things that's almost kind of swept under the carpet. Um, 
which is certainly from my point of view, one of the things that I want to try and help change. Yeah, I love that. I love that because that's exactly what, you know, I tell people all the time, it's not about just packing the case, but no. it's about educating our community, educating our community, because you're right, people don't want to talk about it. And I think a lot of times they don't want to talk about it is because there's so many myths, you know, that these are bad kids. And, you know, I always say there's no such thing as a bad kid. It's only a kid that needs to be redirected. So listen, everyone, um, whether you're listening to us, on any of your favorite um, podcast platform, Apple, Deezer, Spotify, Google, you name it, we are on there. Or maybe you've made the decision to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you're able to actually watch us and see this amazing, amazing partnership. You know, I could not be more excited to know that Comfort Cases is being supported in the UK, that we will have its own website, Comfort Cases UK. We will have its own, it will sit there. I have a lot of people that have reached out to me and say, how can I help in the UK? Well, guess what? We're going to give you those ways that you can also help in the UK. And with this amazing team that we have, we're not going to stop here. We're not going to stop here. But what we do need to do is we need to take a break and thank our sponsors. We'll be right back. This episode of Fostering Change is sponsored by Comfort Cases, a national nonprofit that is inspiring our communities to bring dignity and hope to youth in foster care. You know, for just $10 a month, you can support the Comfort Cases mission to eliminate trash bags from the foster care system. For every $10 donated, a Comfort XL duffel bag will be given to a child entering foster care. Please help us be part of the change. Go to comfortcases.org and see how you can help a child entering our foster care system. Well, welcome back. I am so excited for this podcast. You know, it's actually National Foster Care Awareness Month. I talk about this quite often that here in our country, we are given one month. I will take it. I think that every single month that we should talk about foster care, but we're given the month of May. And I was like really surprised when I was talking to my friends, Sarah and, and Richard and Kate, that they actually in May also have something that's very similar. And they call that foster Foster Care Fortnight. Um, I, I think I got that right. Can one of you explain? Yes. yes. <laughs> Yay. Can one of you explain yes. to me what is that? So Foster Care Fortnight um, this year in 2021 is from the 10th until the 23rd of May. Um, it is run by the UK's biggest foster care charity, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Fostering Network. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's a fairly large charity in the UK, it's still very much um, just just one part. So we don't have a, a national awareness uh, period like you do in the US. Yeah. Um, yes. 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 I love really that. Concerned. I love that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think I spoke to Kate Sarah the other day. I said one of the things I'm really keen on doing is spreading the word so that we can, uh, in, in time, get a national awareness period during the year as you say it'd be great to talk about it every day but let's get let's get uh do one day at a time uh because i think it's uh, like you i think it's a really important subject that needs to be needs to be out there we knew nothing about fostering when we you know when we, when we ended you donate we deliver when we were talking about what it was that we might be able to do as a team next um and and your name was mentioned and comfort cases was mentioned we all stood around and said well who knows anything about the foster care system in the uk and none of us did um, you know, it's taken several months of research to, to, to really kind of just scratch the surface. And it's um, horrifying. Mm. Yeah, it really is horrifying. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head by saying that. I've also know that you've met some really amazing people who have life stories just like I do. And I and I love that. You know, I also want everybody to hear this. All of our listeners are people who are follow. I say this quite often, you know, to make a successful podcast, we need you to listen. We need you to share. We need you to comment. But we also want to hear your questions because, by the way, this isn't going to be the last time our team gets together and they are our team. We are not Comfort Cases the United States. We're not just Comfort Cases UK. We are Comfort Cases, okay? And even though we might have the US behind us in one and we have the UK behind us in the other, we are one 
team. And so we want to hear from you. And there's ways that you can do that. Number one, you can always re reach out to fostering change at comfortcases.org and ask all your questions. I will make sure to connect you with Katie and Richard and Sarah, but you can also email them. So they have e hello at comfortcasesuk.org. I cannot wait until May the 3rd when we roll out the logo, roll out the website, but there's opportunities for each and every one of us to start doing, okay? Number one, they've set up a GoFundMe page. Exact same thing we did at Comfort Cases when we first started. You know, as you're waiting for all of that paperwork to get through, and it's so amazing to me, the amount of paperwork that we have to do to give things away. Um, they've set yeah, up a GoFundMe so page. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, you know. Yeah. But they've set up a GoFundMe page. Um, please visit their Comfort Cases UK Facebook page. Like their Facebook page. Spread the word about their Facebook page. My friends in the United Kingdom, you have given to our organization. We have received donations from every continent except for Antarctica. And what I would love for all of my friends across the pond is to start helping us build this particular mm -hmm. brand in the UK. So when you were gonna go to our national website at comfortcases.org, please visit comfortcasesuk.org. When you have those stuffies or those books or the toiletries that you're trying to figure out, or you want to go to the Amazon wish list for the UK, go there and support them. Because we all know to move the needle for kids, we need money. We need donations. Yeah. We need to be able to pack these cases. So what I want to know, um, Sarah, how many cases are you guys starting to pack when we first kick this off on May? I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've been working so hard and banging the phone. Yeah. Um, so we have our first two orders of a total of 70 cases. So we have... Yeah. <laughs> So we have uh, an order for 20 and an order for 50 and some extra duffel bags to go in the boots and the trunks of the cars to be taken by the social workers. Um, and uh, we're doing we're doing OK. We desperately need pajamas. Yeah. And we blankets. desperately need blankets and we definitely need some stuffies, mm -hmm. please. Um, and if you can't get to the shops or if you haven't got time just to chuckle a couple of extra bits into your uh, supermarket trolley when you're doing your daily shop or whatever, then um, the GoFundMe page is a great an alternative. I know there's still lots of people worried about going out into the big wide world and I know lots of people are struggling with their own lives, but anything that you can do to help us help these innocent children, then yeah. we would be very, very grateful. So I, I will have to tell you, um, there are so many things people can do. I hear people all the time say to me, I don't have any money. Well, I'm here to tell you, my friends, that you can do without having a lot of money. I know in the UK, just like here in the US and throughout the world, we have these amazing humans who love to quilt who love to make beautiful lap quilts. You can make these quilts and give them to Comfort Cases UK so they can roll them up, put a ribbon on them and put them inside of the cases. I know that just like here in the States, we visit hotels, we get the little toiletries, we save them, we put them in a drawer and we forget we have them. You know what? Grab them. Take yeah. them. Yeah. Comfort Cases UK, they need them. And by the way, pajamas pajamas mm. you know i've said this story so many times when my daughter amaya arrived she was four years old she was the saddest little girl i'd ever seen we were her third placement i thought she would never smile and it wasn't until that night when she walked into her new bedroom and laying on the bed were three nightgowns she walked over she picked one of them up and she tore the tag off she turned around and she smiled at me for mm. the very first time. I said, Amaya, why just are you smiling? <laughs> but I said to Amaya, why are you smiling? And she said, Mr. Rob, I have never owned a new nightgown before. See, mm. my friends, that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable yeah. that kids come into a system and we can't even provide them a brand new 
set of pajamas. You know, so the next time you go to that overpriced coffee shop that you guys have, just like we have, yeah, <laughs> go to the store and buy a pair of pajamas with a tag on it. I am telling mm -hmm. you, it will make your heart smile. And I remind mm -hmm. people all the time, you do not have to know someone to love someone. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know someone to love someone. And that's what we all can do. Whether you're in the UK, whether you're in the States, no matter where you are, you do not have to know someone to love someone. So call to action, call to action. Yeah. We need those donations. We need you to visit the GoFundMe page for Comfort Cases UK. Understanding whether it's one pound, whether it's 50 pounds, whether mm -hmm. it's, my son told me there was a thing called a qu uh, quell, quill? A quid. A quid. A quid. A quid. A quid. <laughs> okay, so I've got to tell you all a funny story. My, my son who's 12, my beautiful son, Tristan, these are my, uh, my five children for those in the UK who are watching yeah. for the first time. My son, Tristan, is preparing for our trip to the UK this fall because we are coming to the UK. We are coming, yeah. we're coming to the UK to celebrate this amazing partnership. Um, and I cannot wait. And, you know, if there's mm -hmm. anything that any of you would like to tell our viewers and our listeners, what would those these last things be? Uh, I would say equally important uh, as, as money and donations. If anyone has any contacts uh, or knows of any agencies uh, or kids or social workers that need our help, mm. please, please yes. put us in contact. Because one of the hardest or yeah. the hardest thing that we've encountered so far is trying to reach the right people. To who, give the bags yeah, too, we, yeah. We, we know that there are kids out there that need our help. Uh, but trying to find the right people to, to get in touch with is, is being has been very very difficult so any yeah. contacts you have please please let us know and, and that and was something that was that was me, that was something that was very hard for us in the beginning too richard by the way is the contact what were you getting ready to say oh sorry i was going to say that you don't necessarily also have to help by giving things you you might have a skill or a talent that you would like to offer or, or, as a voluntary service so Yes, we will be looking for people to help us pack bags. Yes, there will be loads of organization and packing to do, but you know, maybe you're a PR expert, maybe you're a corporate fund partnership expert, maybe you're a fundraising expert. There are so many roles that you can do that don't involve giving your money mm. or that involve you going out and buying things. Yes, yeah. those donations are vital, but you know, we are a core team and we are going to need volunteers. So if you uh, want to get in contact with us because you think you have a skill that we can use, then please, please, email us um, yeah. or come and visit us on our Facebook page. So I will tell you, um, it's it's a mirror image, my friends. Those of you who are listening, <laughs> you, you know, it, it, if you're whether no matter where you're listening to this, it is a mirror image because same thing. We are uh, we are at, up until two years ago, a hundred percent volunteer ran charity. We are still ninety six percent volunteer ran, and just like my brothers and sisters in the UK, they need volunteers. Mm -hmm. So you, each and every one of of us again have the ability to do maybe you're you know you're good as they said you're good at reaching out social workers i know you're listening to this i know that you are watching this i know you subscribe to this in the uk open up those doors for these cases for those of you who feel like you cannot leave your home right now because you don't feel safe enough guess what you can pick your phone up and call the social service agencies within your area and tell them about comfort cases uk and find a way that these cases can get into the hands of children because nobody nobody deserves to ever ever be given a bin bag is what they bin call bag. Bin bag. see i'm learning i'm yep. learning Listen, yeah, I, I am so excited i i could not be you know i i woke up this morning and as my kids were getting ready for school i was telling my husband reese that I've done all about 80 episodes of our podcast, Fostering Change, but I can't tell you the last time I've been this excited. And Aww. I'm excited for this journey. I'm excited for, for you all giving 
us the opportunity, okay? Because this would have never happened without amazing humans like you. And you are amazing humans. Listen, my friends, those who are listening to us through all of our podcasts, Apple's, Stitcher, Stitcher, whatever they, all the podcasts they call it, Google, um, Stitcher, um, Deezer, um, all of the podcast platforms, please leave a, leave a message, but do me a big favor, email my friends, email my friends at hello at comfortcasesuk.org. Find them on Instagram, Comfort Cases UK. Find them on Facebook, Comfort Cases UK. We will be sharing these pages as well through Comfort Cases, um, and we will be posting this. And I know during National Foster Care Month, whether it's a week, and by the way, I agree with Richard, we are going to make it a longer than a week. Yeah, yes, we are. <laughs> we are going to do it. But whether it's a week or maybe this is June that you finally got around to listen to this, or even July. Every single day, a child enters foster care, mm -hmm. every single day. And so every single day, we need to be there to give them a comfort cases. And to do that, we truly do need your help. So mm -hmm. subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, again, any questions you have, reach out to my team. You can reach out to me at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. And once again, Happy National Foster Care Month, everyone. Have a safe day. I would like to thank all of you for listening to the Fostering Change podcast. You can subscribe on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Make sure you follow Comfort Cases on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter at Comfort Cases. Check out the Fostering Change blog at comfortcases.org. And I know some of you have a question, and I know some of you would love to be a guest. Please personally reach out to me at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. That's fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. Then do me a big favor. Please help spread the word. Share this podcast. Share it with your friends and your family. Remember, I say this quite often, we're all part of the same community. And that community, it's not our zip code, but our human race. Let's all make a difference.